Strathclyde. And so I'm going to just uh, share my um, PowerPoint slides uh, and uh, we'll start the, uh, the webinar. Um, the presentation will be about 30 minutes or so. And um, if you have any questions during the webinar uh, or during the presentation, please feel free to um, send them through the chat or you can ask them uh, after my presentation. Um, so I'll share my slide just now. Okay, so uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is Alan Huang. I'm the course leader for the MSc TSO and Intercultural Communication. Uh, I joined the University of Strathclyde in 2016. Uh, so it's been almost six years um, since I've been working at the university and I really enjoy it. Before that, I was a PhD student at the University of Edinburgh and I also did my master's there. So, um, the University of Strathclyde, uh, as you probably some of you probably know, is uh, based in the in Glasgow, which is the biggest city in Scotland. And I have a short video uh, prepared. Uh, hopefully, I can play so I can show you the um, um, a general introduction to the university. Um, I don't think it's working. Um, so, okay. So, uh, just a little bit of information about Glasgow. First of all. Uh, Glasgow is the biggest city in Scotland, and it's also the, um, the home of BBC Scotland, some of you may know, um, and um, it has um, uh, it's, it's a lot of um, interesting places for you to visit, for example, the um, uh, shopping, um, shopping area in the city centre, and it also has great transport links. For those of you who like uh, the nightlife, it's also a fantastic uh, place to be in. Uh, if you were to study at the University of Strathclyde. Um, we are also pretty close to Loch Lomond, which is just uh, further north of Glasgow. Uh, so it provides you with the nature and um, um, beautiful um, sceneries to visit. So a little bit background about Strathclyde. Uh, the university was founded in 1796 through the will of John Anderson as a place of useful learning. Um, it is Glasgow's second oldest university after the University of Glasgow, some of you may know. And we received our Royal Charter in 1964 as the first technological university in the UK. There are four faculties um, in the university, uh, Faculty of Engineering, Science, Strathclyde Business School, and where you will be based in, which is Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. So, I'm going to just start with um, some, um, you know, quotes from our recent graduate, Lin Yue, who uh, studied with us a couple of years ago. Uh, she was an excellent student and she, uh, she's from China and she achieved a distinction at the end of her study. So as, uh, as Lin said, uh, there are many highlights um, during her master's study at Strathclyde. Uh, one of them was the personal discussion with assignments and also life with different teachers. So as part of the MSCT, so and intercultural communication, we do value our um, opportunities to uh, engage with our students personally. As you will see, it's a relatively small cohort uh, each year. So we do get a chance to get to know every single student. And we have one-on-one -on -one conversation with them about assignments, academic issues in general, or indeed some personal issues too. Um, so in her case, the most difficult thing at postgraduate level, this is studying at master's level, was that uh, she had to inspire herself to push on and learn independently. And indeed, independent learning is an important part of studying at master's level. Um, and um, as you can see, she also enjoyed interacting with her supervisors uh, and other lecturers. Uh, and uh, we are all trying to be really supportive because we all want you to graduate and hopefully to achieve the best outcome in the end. Um, so um, yeah, so uh, as you can see, she really enjoyed uh, studying at Strathclyde. Uh, she's got some advice for future students, uh, or indeed you guys, if you're thinking of studying with us. Um, the first advice is to um, spend some time previewing the materials before the class. Uh, being fully prepared always inspired her when she attended lectures and seminars. 
So we do highlight this a lot to our students that you have to come to seminars and lectures prepared. We will give you a pre-sessional readings. We'll give you um, module handbooks, reading lists to prepare you for the, um, the questions that you will get for the seminars. And indeed it's part of the learning process. And the second advice uh, Lynn gave, uh, gave you guys is that um, um, she advised that you interact with your tutors as much as you can. And indeed that's how you uh, establish a relationship with us. So we really uh, enjoy interacting with all of our students, uh, whether it's uh, issues relating, relating to academic uh, studies or uh, any personal uh, circumstances. Um, thirdly, the course focuses more on theory uh, and it'd be a good idea to take on some part-time job in teaching in order to practice methods learned in the class. So this is a, a really useful advice as well because it's a full-time master's course and um, we are not a teaching qualification. So although we have the teaching component and indeed it's a very important part of the course, but uh, mo mo the majority of the contents of the course is related to theories in second language acquisition and second language teaching. So wherever possible, whether um, you, know, you, you need that part-time job to earn some extra money, or you, you want to have a part-time job just to practice, like Lin uh, said, uh, what you learned in the class, um, we do encourage students to take on these opportunities, uh, provided that they're, they're okay with the academic side of the study. But if you're interested, please feel free to have a discussion with me or any other tutors on the course, and we should be able to advise you whether it's appropriate or it's the right move for you to take on some part-time job. So within the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, um, there are six schools. The um, MSCT, so and Intercultural Communication, is based in the School of Education. However, it's jointly delivered by the School of Education staff and the School of Humanities staff, as I'll explain later. The School of Education uh, can trace its history back to 1837, when David Stowe founded the Glasgow Normal Seminary. Um, and we are one of the first teacher education institutions in the UK. And later, it became Jordan Hill College of Education. And Jordan Hill College merged with the University of Strathclyde in 1993. So this is a little bit background about the School of Education. We have a really active Twitter account at strat.edu. So if you're interested, you can follow um, our Strathclyde uh, Education uh, School of Education account. So the School of Education is a leading provider of teacher education in Scotland and is one of the largest in the UK. And we are ranked number four in the UK for education uh, in the complete university guide. We have over a hundred academic staff uh, within the school uh, who teach and research on various areas related to education, including language education and teacher education. So um, all of our staff are active in research and we also bring the knowledge that we, we learn from research and from uh, knowledge exchange to our teaching. So it really allows us to bring a wide range of experience to the professional preparation for our students. And because the MSCT, so and intercultural communication students will become future English language teachers. Uh, we do have uh, a number, a good number of um, colleagues who specializes uh, in language education. Um, so many of our colleagues have also, also have Twitter accounts, including myself. So if you are interested, you can follow me or uh, one of our other colleagues, um, Thomas uh, John as well. Some background about the MSA TSO and intercultural communication course. The course fundamentally addresses the questions about learning, teaching, and use of English by speakers of other languages from an intercultural communication perspective. Students will gain a better understanding of language learning and language use in today's increasingly multilingual and multicultural society. Many of our students in the past are uh, from a non-English speaking background. So um, it's really interesting to have students from a variety of backgrounds. Some of them are so-called native speakers, others are not uh, so-called native speakers, but they are really fluent in the, uh, the use of English language. So it's really nice to see a group of students who 
who uh, are able to interact with each other, able to challenge each other's views on a range of issues on language learning and teaching in the class. And during the course, during your study at the course, you will also get to explore issues across disciplines and to spe specialize in one area. As I said before, the course uh, is jointly delivered by the School of Education staff and the School of Humanities staff. So you do get to experience both um, disciplines, um, including those who specialize in education sciences and those who specializes in literary studies. So you can choose which area or which discipline you'd like to focus more, um, for example, for your optional modules and also for your final uh, piece of work dissertation. You will have the opportunities to develop the theoretical knowledge and practical skills for language related uh, careers. Um, so in one of the modules, the one I lead is called Contemporary Issues in Language Teaching. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. You get to actually carry out uh, a series of micro teaching activities where you teach in smaller groups, uh, each other, uh, a few lessons, just to get you a taste of what it's like to be an English language teacher. And I do recognize that some of you already have some teaching experience, where others don't. So it can be challenging for some students but our overall goal is to give you an idea of what it's like to apply the theories you learn in the class to practice. So the course uh, draws on the expertise of ex educationalists, linguists, literary and cultural studies from both schools. So um, here are some of the colleagues that you will see um, uh, when you study on the course, including myself who is course leader, and we also have uh, John and McTake, Nigel, Tomash, Celia, Alan Blake, Eleanor, Elspeth, and Kirsty. So we offer a wide range of optional modules, as you can see. However, um, there are five core modules, uh, three uh, subject specific core modules. These include language learning in the multilingual world, introduction to intercultural communication, contemporary issues in language teaching. And then we also have a research methodologies and reasoning course, um, and then the final dissertation. Each of the um, 20 credit course uh, will make up the final uh, credit um, summation for the course. The dissertation, however, is worth 60 credits. So it's triple uh, the, the, the credit rate, credit weighting. Students can choose uh, two optional modules from the list, including uh, curriculum development in TESOL, Digital Technologies in Language Teaching, Reimagining TESOL in the 21st Century, Transcultural Fandom and British Popular Culture, Narrative Processing Across Languages, Cultures and Media, and finally Contemporary uh, Scottish Cultural Studies. So as you can see, we have three education optional modules and three humanities optional modules. So you can mix and match and choose one from education, one from humanities, or two from each school. So it's really up to you how you would like to specialize. Ideally, you want to choose something that can inform your dissertation or final project for the master's study. So here is what the timetable looks like for this year. Uh, as you can see, because it's a full-time course, we do expect students to be studying from Monday to Friday. So you have classes um, in semester one, you have four uh, core modules. Um, and then in semester two, you only get to choose two of these modules. So the workload is a little bit higher for semester one, but for semester two, it's a little bit lighter. And indeed, I'm talking about the September star students, okay? Um, so the first compulsory module is called Language Learning in a Multilingual World. And this module is based on our shared reading of one important journal article by the Douglas Fir Group which reviews key ideas relating to second language acquisition. So the module leader for this uh, module is Joanna McPaik. Each week, you will look at, uh, look at a different set of issues raised in this article and consider how these help us think about context for language learning, language processes, goals, and outcomes. Lectures will introduce these issues and in the seminars, you will explore them in more detail through discussion and through reflections on your own experiences in blog format. So this is the first uh, compulsory module. 
the second compulsory module, Contemporary Issues in Language Teaching, is the module I lead. This module offers students the opportunity to develop a critical understanding of key issues relating to second and foreign language education. Students will get to reflect on their own language learning and teaching experiences and debate the prevalent ideas in the field of language teaching. Students will also develop the practical skills of analyzing, evaluating, and designing innovative language teaching materials. So as I said before, this module does provide you the opportunity to try out some of the teaching methods that we talk about in the class and to also design a series of lessons as part of the final assignment. This module has a particular focus on the impact of sociocultural theory on language education. So looking at the use of artifacts in our everyday life and how we use that to communicate, how we use that as a medium for language learning and teaching. The third composite module is called Introduction to Intercultural Communication. This class critically applies the linguistic theory uh, of communication and theoretical approaches to culture to a range of problems in intercultural communication. This is a humanities class, so it's a stronger focus on literary studies. Um, we explore what a culture is and uh, whether cultures differ systematically. So you will learn about linguistic theory of communication and approaches to discourse and conversation, speech acts, including ways in which these differ between cultures. So you will consider how faith and politeness can be theorized and how they differ between cultures. Um, look at how languages differ and whether differences in language may lead to differences in thought. So you look at the self identity and the relation to culture and cultural differences. So this is a really interesting, mod, uh, re re really interesting module. And in the past, we've had some you know, fantastic discussions about how the intercultural com component um, can contribute to the teaching of the English language. And as part of a full-time master student, uh, you can also, you're also entitled to in-sessional English language support. So if, you are, if English is not your first language, you're not very confident with the, the use of English, English language, uh, when you arrive in the UK, you are entitled to free in-sessional English language classes um, um, offered by the university. So the classes meet once a week for two hours for five or 10 weeks. And um, students paying overseas fee for a full year are entitled four hours um, per week. Uh, so you can book these courses throughout the year, as you can see. In the in-sessional courses, um, you know, have a, a range of topics. So depending on your needs, maybe you want to focus more on spoken fluency and discussion skills, or maybe you want to focus on vocabulary development or postgraduate writing. So you can choose which um, module you would like to, uh, to study, but this is part of the um, you know, services that the university provides to all international students. So when you come to Strathclyde, do take advantage of these uh, fantastic opportunities. And by the way, they also offer one-on-one -on -one consultations. Uh, so if you're interested, you can get in touch with uh, an ELT tutor to discuss problems with your English. So get more targeted help for your English language. As I said before, we are act very active on Twitter. So if you're interested, feel free uh, to follow us on Twitter with the School of Education handle Strath.edu. We also have a School of Education podcast, which, um, we, where we discuss a number of um, education related issues. Actually, I have an episode on that podcast as well, uh, talking about the MSCT, so and intercultural communication. So please feel free to listen to the podcast to find out more about the course, uh, but we also have like mini lectures all for free. So you can go to Anchor to listen to the podcast. There's also a School of Education blog that you can, um, you can read. Um, so we would invite academics in the School of Education to write a short piece um, every few weeks on a range of issues again. So feel free to check them out. With regard to future careers, um, so by the end of uh, the MSC TESO and intercultural communication, uh, graduates will be in a strong position to start and enhance careers as English language professionals. So whether you are 
um, new to the teaching of English as a, as a profession or you are more experienced, this course is for you. Uh, whether you want to do it in your home country or internationally, uh, do it as part of the uh, you know, traveling um, lifestyle. You may choose to work as an English language teacher, course designer, uh, course director, with students ranging from young learners to high school students to college or university students and adult learners. The MSC TESO uh, and Intercultural Communication is a taught master's level course. So you also have the option to pursue a more research oriented route, for example, a doctor of education or doctor of uh, philosophy. Again, I'm very happy to discuss these uh, options with any of you if you're interested. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop the presentation here. I'm happy to take questions from now. Thank you so much for that. That was really interesting. Um, so just a wee reminder, if you have any questions, please stick them in the Q&A box or the chat box and we'll get right to them. Um, so we do have one wee question in the chat box from Stuart um, saying, it was lovely to hear about one of the graduates. Do you have examples of what other graduates have gone on to do? So uh, we do keep in touch with some of our graduates um, and I think the majority of them work as uh, school teachers uh, when they return to their home countries. I think they work either as a primary English language um, teacher or secondary English language teacher in their home countries. Uh, some of them also uh, manage to uh, work in, um, uh, in more commercial setting, for example, setting up uh, a language school in their home country as well. Um, and some of them pursue a PhD. So I actually, we, uh, I just wrote a reference for one of our former graduates in, and, um, and she's got an offer uh, to study at the University of Aberdeen uh, uh, for a PhD. So um, the career-wise, career it, it does vary a lot. It depends on what you want to do, but because it's taught at master's level, it so offers you the, the chance to pursue a PhD should you wish to, yeah. Thank you for that answer, Alan. Um, oh, we have one more in the chat um, from Vijani. Can you further explain about the practicals of the course? Mm -hmm. So um, because this is a taught master's course, uh, we wouldn't call it practicals because you don't have placements, okay? So as part of the course, one of the modules, the module I lead, contemporary issues in language teaching, language teaching, you do get to practice the theories that we talked about in the class in small group settings. I call this micro teaching. So you teach your fellow classmates uh, a series of lessons and you design a series of lessons as part of the final assignments. You don't really get to you know, for example, go to a school or go to a language training center to do teaching to real students. So we do offer students the option to take up a part-time job should they wish, um, but this is not mandatory. You don't have to be working while you teach, uh, while, while you study, sorry. Great, thank you for sharing that. Um, we have a question from an anonymous attendee. What advice can you give us if we have difficulty choosing two optional modules? Yes, I'm happy to have one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings with you if you have difficulty choosing optional modules. Uh, and uh, really just to explore your interests and what you enjoy about the first semester. And then you get to choose what you'd like to do for your optional modules. As I said, when you're thinking about optional modules, you do have to think about what you want to do for the final piece of uh, work, the dissertation, because you want to specialize in your optional modules because that's really wh where you shine. So if you enjoyed more education modules, uh, then choose two optional education modules. If you enjoy more humanities modules, then choose two humanities modules. If you're really not sure, just choose one from each. But we'll be able to give you more targeted advice if we get to, one, uh, get to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you. Great, thank you. We have another one from Stuart asking, what are job opportunities like in the UK for students looking to stay in the UK as part of the graduate route? Does the university have any links with employers? Um, job opportunities in the UK. So uh, we actually have a few um, UK students each year. Most of our students are international, I have to say. Um, if you are from the UK and you'd like to study the course, again, of course, you're welcome to study on the course. Um, as, as of graduates uh, for, from the MSCT, so in intercultural communication, um, I think as far as I understand, a lot of our graduates 
either go and teach English abroad. Actually, again, I wrote another reference for someone who just graduated and wanted to teach in Japan. So, and, and she's uh, Scottish. So you can, you can either use the um, master's as a as part of your qualifications to apply for jobs, uh, English language teaching jobs abroad. Or if you want to stay in the UK, you can either become uh, um, an EAL language teacher, uh, EAL language teacher, English as an additional language to help um, you know, uh, migrant uh, children in schools in the UK, or you can train to become an English language teacher uh, by doing uh, our PGD uh, English course. Great, thank you. We have another one from an anonymous attendee asking, what is the makeup of the course in terms of nationalities? Yes, so um, actually the course is very multinational. Um, so we have students coming from China, we have students coming from uh, Saudi Arabia and other Middle Eastern countries. We also have students from India, Thailand, um, Vietnam, uh, and um, the UK, of course, we have um, Scottish students on the course too. Um, and we also have students from some European countries like uh, Greek, for example, last year. So it's very multinational. So you do get to um, you know, make new friends from different countries, from different cultures. And indeed it's part of the course that I really enjoy, which is interacting with students from different cultures. Thank you for that. Um... Yeah, if you've got any other questions, please pop them in the Q&A box and we'll answer them for you. Um, but just a reminder, um, if you would like a copy of this recording after it's done, please just get in contact with us and we can send it over to you if you want it. Just give it a wee minute, maybe people are typing. Oh, we have another one from the anonymous attendee. How much of the course is taking place face-to-face -face this year with COVID restrictions? So for this year, um, we aim to have half of the course face-to-face -face and the other half online. Uh, and we're hoping to increase more face-to-face -face content in semester two. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether you're thinking of joining us in January or in September but uh, I'm pretty sure from September 2022, um, we'll probably be uh, pretty much back to face-to-face -face because it's the full-time face-to-face uh, -face course. But from January, we're still not sure, but we do have a number of modules who will offer uh, more than half or half of the face-to-face, -face, uh, half of the content face-to-face. -face. So my advice to be is to, to be on campus uh, when, the, when the course starts, and um, just enjoy, enjoy the, the blended learning experience. It's really interesting. It's been a really interesting year, actually, uh, to have the blended learning experience. Yeah. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, just as a wee add on for that answer there, it is all dependent on sort of what the government tells us to do as well. So sometimes we can't give a definite answer for that either, which I know could be annoying, but it is all just dependent on what the government sort of tells us we have to do. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, another one. Are there opportunities to choose classes from other courses as optionals? Unfortunately not, because we already offer six uh, optional modules. So students should choose from these six um, classes. However, because I'm the course director, I do have the authority to authorize you to take a class from another course, should you wish. So if you are thinking of that when you're on the course, you should schedule a meeting with me and we'll have a chat about it. And you give me, you tell me why you would like to take that course. If I think it's a valid, there's a valid reason. For example, if you want to do a dissertation on by using statistical methods and you want to take a statistics course, but obviously statistics is not part of our course. So if that's what you want to do for your dissertation, I'm going to allow you to do that. So it is possible, but um, it does have to be agreed between you and I. Great, thank you. Um, we just wait to see if any more come in. Um, that we've answered quite a few. Um, let's see. Um, just from the anonymous attendee saying that was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. 
we we hope that it's helped you hope that it's answered some of your questions um well, we have another one from vijani is it compulsory to to do the pgde in this course before entering for the course so i think is do you have to do a pgde before doing this course no no you don't have to do a pgde all you need is a first degree um, and um, and then you can enroll on the course the PGD is something completely different. Yeah, it's a teacher training course. Great, thank you. Um, let's see if anything else comes in. Um, I don't think anything else is coming in at the moment. Um, but yeah, as I said, please get in contact with us if you do think of any other questions. Um, you can get in contact with Alan or you can get in contact um, with us. We also have a thing called Unibuddy, um, which has some current students on it. So if you're sort of wanting to ask some students about their perspective and um, their student experience, student life, please look that up. Um, it's Chat to an Ambassador at University of Strathclyde. And you can ask about Glasgow, about social life, about the union. Um, so please keep in that, keep that in mind if you have any questions about that. 